Welcome to the uh, select board special meeting, uh, informational meeting in lieu of town meeting day. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. It's Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022 at 7 p.m. Uh, first order of business is to approve the agenda unless there's any changes. I make the motion, a motion to approve the agenda as presented. A couple of additions. Um, at the end of the meeting, after the after the public information ends, the select board needs to discuss um, what it wants to have its next meeting. Um, in particular, there's an issue that staff hopes that we can get done sooner rather than waiting for the new select board um, is to talk about um, interviewing this candidate for his own administrator. And then, uh, there's also some information about scheduling the meeting to talk about a potential grant, unfortunately. Okay. Well, I amend my motion to include those additions. Okay. Um, is there, is that it for, yep. is there a second? second? It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Just want to make sure everybody speaks up so that that yep. all can. Um, so folks who are on Zoom, it's a little different this time. I can't remember what the terminology is, but basically um, in order for you to speak, you either have to click the raise hand button or type your questions into the chat box. So um, the Q&A box, I guess, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, just so everyone knows that. but. Um, we are gonna move on to consent agenda items, minutes from February 7th meeting and the liquor license for Farmhouse Flowers LLC, Fast Western, Champlain Farms, and Fast Stop. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda items. Okay, is there a second? All second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, next. We're going to move on to public remarks. This is your opportunity to speak to anything that's not on the agenda. Um, we will do the best we can to involve anyone in the rest of the agenda, but this is an opportunity to speak to anything that's not currently laid out in our meeting. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak tonight? Okay, we will move on to the uh, public informational meeting. Again, this uh, meeting is in lieu of town meeting day. Um, we're gonna do the best we can to run through the town report and discuss what's being voted on in terms of budgets. Um, and we'll recap a little bit of what's happened last year. So, um, you know, I think from those who have seen the report, um, Waterbury is doing quite well financially. Um, we had a, another continued year of kind of COVID um, navigation. Um, we did a lot with the budgets in the previous year, anticipating that revenues were going to be down from things like pilot, um, which are some forms of revenue that come in from the state and some are um, pegged to rooms and meals tax collection and our anticipation that some of those revenues might be down. Um, the good news is that those revenues came in higher than expected. Um, it allowed us to not shift uh, money that we had budgeted from the um, tax stabilization fund. Um, other big things that happened last year is basically the majority conclusion of um, downtown construction and, and Main Street reconstruction. Um, so the, those parts of the budget will slowly be or quickly be coming off of the um, spending side of our budget. Um, and for the most part, that project is at completion. Um, we had quite a bit of increase in activity in our rec programs. Um, and a lot of that was in response to the needs of the community as childcare became kind of a conversation. So uh, Nick did a really great job of expanding those programs and keeping an eye on budgets. And uh, I think I can speak to the select board that we're really happy with that. Um, Library, I think, is getting back to um, where they were pre-COVID in terms of activity. Um, we have a new um, 
library director. Um, so there's some things happening there. We got through quite a few projects in the highway department, including the Blush Hill repaving. Um, I don't think there's anything else that should really be mentioned. I guess one of the other big um, conversations is Bill will be leaving us at the end of the year. So discussions surrounding his replacement and a plan for that. Um, at the same time, there's conversations surrounding um, the potential merger with EFUD and how that might look and also conversations potentially surrounding a charter. So I think there's some big things that are gonna be coming up in the next year. Um, and there's a couple special articles that we'll get into that address um, some of the needs that we've identified, but also, uh, you know, we're gonna start discussing as a board and in the town, um, the ARPA funds that, you know, Water Bay received 1.55 million in, in the ARPA funds. There's a rule book on how those funds can be spent. Um, and the select board will be discussing how to spend those funds in the next couple of years. So quite a few things happening. Um, and we'll get into the budget. I guess, yeah, I'm not sure what else we want to. So I think we should just talk about the reports of town officers. Uh, you kind of hit a lot of the highlights of last year's spending, Mark. If anybody has any questions about um, anything in the report, uh, whether it's a narrative report by uh, any of the staff or the select board, or if there's any questions about reports of financial information, or even uh, from some of the organizations that the town supports through special articles, this is the time to ask questions about what's in the town report that refers back to last year. So again, any participants in Zoom, you can type those into the Q&A um, button on the bottom of the Zoom window that you can enter questions um, surrounding any of the reports. Um, or they can raise their hand. Or you can click raise your hand. And I don't know if anyone who's here tonight wishes to have, has any questions on the reports or All right, I think we will move on to the presentation of setting the tax due dates. That's article four. I'm gonna let me ask Carla to talk about that Is it in the article. Article four on page one of the town report. The task due dates are set for August 12th, 2022, and the second installment on November 4th, 2022. We had to dodge the following year in November because Veterans Day is Friday of that week. Friday of that so week, and we did not want to make the tax due date on a federal holiday. Installments must be paid in hand by 4.30 on the due date. And interest will be charged at the maximum allowed by statute not to exceed one and one half percent per month or portion thereof on each installment. And a late penalty of 8% will be charged as allowed by statute on taxes not paid after the November installment. And I think to maybe state the obvious to the people who are listening, um, this meeting is going to be conducted all by Australian ballot. So there's no opportunity to amend anything here. You either have to vote yes or no. So if the voters approve Article 4, um, the due dates will be as Carla suggested on uh, August 12th and November 4th. And the penalties and interest as laid out in the article, uh, which are the penalties um, as allowed by law, will be in place. Um, the voters, not the select board, have the authority to uh, 
to make this determination. And this is what got printed. So this is, it's going to be this, or if you turn it down, then we'll have to have another meeting to set the date. So please don't turn it down. Any comments or questions? Uh, if the public doesn't have any comments or questions on that, we can move on to the presentation of the capital budget of the town, Article 5 in the morning on the ballot. Yep. Want to take it? Sure. <laughs> okay. So, Article 5 uh, is the Question to the voters about capital spending, $1,698,455. If you look at page 20, um, Karen will put this up on the screen so those of you who might not have a town report have it. The uh, proposed spending for the capital plan is shown here on, on page 20 in this 2022 capital funds budget snapshot. Um, you can see there that at the top is fund 70, which is paving, uh, then the infrastructure fund, fund 71, fund 72 is for highway vehicles, fund 73 and 74 have to do with a fire station um, and uh, municipal building fund, that's fund 73. I mean, fund 73 is the fire uh, vehicle fund, and then the fund 74 will be the fire station and uh, municipal building fund. And then fund 75 is recreation. So um, we're continuing with a fairly aggressive paving uh, program. Uh, there's about $400,000 of paving earmarked for this year and then $55,000 to pay the debt that we have on the Perry Hill, uh, Perry Hill bond that has uh, five years more to go, I believe. Okay. So uh, we received a, a grant, a state class two paving grant in the amount of $175,000 that we will put towards paving on Stowe Street, we received that grant this year, but given the timing and the fact that you have to put these projects out to bid if there's a grant, uh, we shifted gears and paved Blush Hill this year and we'll go back now in 2022 and do, um, do Stowe Street. The project on Stowe Street uh, will be about $270,000 altogether. I believe we're gonna mill off some of the existing pavement and then overlay it. There's a concrete roadbed under Stowe Street, unlike the job that was done on Route 100 and Route 2 several years ago, we're not pulling out the concrete roadbed. So uh, that, will, that will remain and we'll deal with uh, the cracking from that um, uh, over the years. That's a huge expense to remove that, um, that concrete from that road. And then since we'll be in the neighborhood, we plan to do work on Hill Street, which is in bad need of uh, re resurfacing North Street, Swayze Court. And then we have uh, the last part of Blush Hill to do beyond uh, Lonesome Trail. There's a culvert up on Blush Hill that needs to be replaced. We'll replace that this summer and then do that final paving on that section of the road that was left as a, a base course uh, after last year's work. <laughs> so altogether, we estimate about $461,000 for that. In the infrastructure CIP, I'm not gonna read all of these things. And it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, the Main Street project uh, is essentially complete. We have some uh, amenities, some things like uh, trash barrels and wayfinding signs and the like that need to be 
um, need to be installed this year uh, to finish up that project. That's an estimated cost of $140,000. All of that is grant funded from um, uh, transportation enhancement grant that we have received and we'll be submitting reimbursement for that uh, after we spend the money. So that won't really cost the town anything. Uh, the downtown improvements, including sidewalks, uh, again, we're hopeful, we're, I hope we'll be applying for a, a downtown improvement grant made available to communities with designated downtowns. Uh, the maximum grant is $200,000. It's a 20% uh, match, so that would be $40,000. And we hope with that 240 that's listed there as an expenditure, that we'll be upgrading the lighting at the Rusty Parker Park. The lights there that have been there since the 1980s are really uh, have seen better days. They're starting to get a little tippy and uh, they really need to be replaced. Uh, if we're successful, we'll replace those lights with the same style of period lighting that we have on the, on the Main Street project. There's also some money in there for some enhancement of the uh, trash receptacles and recycling receptacles that are on, uh, on the park. And then the bulk of the money uh, would be used to uh, build or rebuild the sidewalks on Randall Street and Park Row. Uh, if everything goes well, uh, both sides of Randall Street, the full length, and Park Row from Randall Street over to Main Street will be, will be uh, those sidewalks will be replaced. So that's what that is. And again, uh, if we can do that work and end up spending $40,000 of local tax money to do that will be a, a great thing. Uh, we're hopeful that the grant application will be approved. Um, the sidewalk replacement for $20,000, uh, we're gonna we propose to build a sidewalk on Stowe Street opposite the school. Currently, you know that the children at the school um, use the field down below uh, next to Thatcher Brook for um, recreation purposes, gym classes, cross country skiing, snowshoeing. They also do science work down there uh, along the, the Brook Bank. And um, uh, right now they're crossing the street kind of from the parking lot of the school where there's no crosswalk and going down that uh, field driveway that's there. So we'd like to build a sidewalk that connects. There is a short stretch of sidewalk on that side of Stowe Street from the corner of Swayze Court that goes uh, up through where the houses are, but we'd like to add a section there so those kids can more safely cross at the crosswalk and then walk all the way up on the sidewalk to that uh, driveway. Uh, building improvements in the highway garage. We've got to do a little bit of work on the, uh, on the gray barn, some siding work. Uh, and um, that is in the budget there for $45,000. I spoke about the culvert on Blush Hill. Uh, and then the big project here, $200,000 on the River Road Rehabilitation Project. This is the road that goes in from Route 100 to the uh, state park, um, oh, what we call Reservoir Road, you said river. I'm sorry, Reservoir Road, uh, which goes in from Route 100 to the state park uh, up in Waterbury Center. Um, if you drive in there now, you'll notice that the, the guardrails, I kind of joked with the board, that they're more like guard curbs right now. They're, that whole left side of the road as you're going in is is sliding down the hill and we need to shore that up. We've had engineering work already done uh, and we have an estimate of $200,000. Uh, we're hopeful that the estimate will hold. Unfortunately, with all the challenges that we're having with supplies and, and uh, with so many communities trying to spend money, uh, bid prices 
or bids when they're opened are, are significantly higher than the estimates. So we'll have to deal with that when we deal with it. Uh, there's a little bit of debt service from past infrastructure that needs to be paid as well. Highway vehicles, uh, pretty straightforward. We've already purchased the bucket loader. Um, we typically don't try to get ahead of the voters, but uh, sometimes with the way that supplies are working, uh, if we hadn't ordered that, we probably would not have received the delivery on the loader in this calendar year. So um, uh, we've already taken delivery on that one. Um, the cabin chassis for a, a truck is a, a normal replacement of a truck in its regular cycle. And we are hoping to buy our, our Harley rake, which we're gonna buy, yeah, we're gonna buy a Harley rake, which can be used um, on uh, gravel roads uh, after grading, and then also on recreation fields to try to uh, you know get the get the, the surfaces graded out a little bit better. Um, I think that's that there. The fire, the fire. There's, there's no, uh, no purchases of any fire trucks this year. Uh, One hundred twenty-nine thousand of debt service is debt service basically for the two fire trucks that we bought in 2019. Uh, the select board refinanced that that five-year note, turned it into a 15-year bond, and that's the fire department's share of that which is really a good deal for the town. Those trucks will last, uh, will have 20 year lives. Uh, we were able to refinance that uh, 1.1 million, not all for the fire trucks, but we refinanced that for 15 years at 2%, which is a, a very good rate in this environment. So I think we're in good shape there. And then for the recreation fund, um, the, Tennis court improvements are for windscreens to go on uh, the fencing of one of the courts to allow them to play uh, tennis, mainly hardwood tennis in windy months of the year. Um, there's pool improvements, which is uh, a mechanical lift to try to uh, facilitate uh, those with disabilities getting in and out of the pool if they have to be uh, in a wheelchair. Uh, the field improvements and court improvements is really to um, uh, finish the paving of the parking lot there. We did half of it last year and the other half we're planning to do this year. And the building improvements are uh, some improvements to the rec building itself, a new handicap ramp going in that meets standards. We have a ramp there now, but it does not meet the standards of uh, the American with Disabilities Act. And to do a little bit of work on the, uh, on the roofs or the eaves where we've been having a little trouble. So with that, that's a, a kind of a quick update on capital spending. So if there's questions, I'll be happy to take them. Any questions? Anyone on Zoom have any questions? Feel free to click the raise your hand or enter a question in the Q&A. Right. I guess we will move on to presentation of the budgets of operating funds, designated reserve funds and special purpose funds of the town, Article 6. Okay. All right, we'll, uh, we'll run through the budget. For those of you who have um, a town report, uh, page 18, which is the budget summary is there. Uh, you can look at that, but I don't think we have page 18 uh, to put on the screen and if we don't that's my fault because I was the one who told them which pages to have so um, 
Uh, proposed operating budget starts on page 21 and goes through page 31. So it's the general operating fund, the highway fund, and the library fund. Um, I'll try to hit the highlights pretty quickly and then let folks ask uh, specific questions if you have any. Um, first on page 21 and, and uh, part of page 22, uh, that shows the revenues, both what we uh, budgeted and received in 2021 and what we're anticipating for revenues in 2022. As Mark indicated at the top of the meeting, um, under other governments, which you can see in the middle of the page on page 21, uh, we received uh, all of the pilot money that the, the formula generally produces for Waterbury. We budgeted um, uh, significantly less in everything that we were uh, thinking we we're gonna get from the state because we did not know what would happen to state uh, general fund revenues all of which pay for these uh, line items. So the pilot, the forest and parks payment, and the current use payment, those three items there, uh, you can see we budgeted 160, 30,000, and 35,000 respectively. And in every case, we took in significantly more, 330 in pilot, over 91,000 in forest and parks, and about 106,500 in current use. Um, the fact that we received that money uh, along with some um, pinching on the spending side are the real reasons why we had such significant fund balances in, in our operating funds. And flipping way over to page 29, You can see that in the general fund at the at, up at the top of page 29 in the middle column that the ending fund balance in the general fund was about $173,000. In the highway fund, the operating fund balance, which was uh, it's on page 30, uh, the ending fund balance last year was uh, $98,500. And in the library fund, it was 15,920. That's on page 31. So those fund balances are very significant. And um, if you go back to the screen share and click the first box, I think you'll the other one highlighted. Never seen this screen. I know. So go to where you say screen sharing to right share here. one. Yep. So go click it and write. It brings up all the different screens you could bring up. Put right yourself out of here. <laughs> Are you still in the meeting? I think yeah. you're just seeing this. Mm -hmm. Can you hit stop sharing and then, yeah. and then do screen share again? And then, yep, that one. Oh, uh, there's one more. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> ah, there you go. Great. Ah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay. What page are you on, though? Sorry. Uh, well, I'm, I'm through to page 31. So on page 31, you got to go at the bottom. Oh, you're through. Page. Yeah, okay. 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 So 15,920. So altogether, you know, those fund balances uh, are um, pushing $300,000. And uh, that, that money will help us going forward into 2022 to uh, stabilize the tax rate. Um, we also have budgeted in 2022 uh, as if it was a normal year for most things. Um, the tax rate that we're projecting right now, um, you may not have this page either, but 
well, we know you don't have that page. Uh, page 18, the operating budget summary, uh, we're projecting a tax rate of 53 cents in 2022 if we get a 1% increase in the grand list. If the grand list uh, increases uh, at a greater rate than 1%, the tax rate might be able to be a little bit lower. Um, the way that we have asked the question for this article, um, article six, um, it, it asks the voters to set the tax rate um, up to 53 cents. So a 53 cent tax rate in 2022 will be the highest tax rate that we can have. If July comes and we'll be halfway through our budget year when we set the tax rate, if things are looking better than anticipated, and if the grand list should grow more than uh, has been estimated in this budget, the select board might be willing to uh, reduce the rate a little bit. We'll talk about that at that time, um, making a tax rate that's lower than really necessary using um, kind of good fortune that, that you gather in, in the year that you're budgeting for. Uh, sometimes it's a little dangerous because in subsequent years, you might have to make up that reduced rate and, uh, and see a higher increase uh, to get you back on an even footing. However, the 2022 budget has a number of items in it that are one-time expenditures. Um, if you look on page 20, 2022, uh, on page 22 on this 2 to 1 <laughs> to 22, right? If we look at page 22, um, in the regular pay line item, you'll note that that is lower than it was a year ago. Um, 327,000 is budgeted compared to 352 spent. Uh, the 352 included um, a significant salary for Barbara Farr, who was our transportation liaison in the uh, for the Main Street project. Barb had worked for the town since 2012 or 13 after the flood. Um, the 327,000 includes just uh, about $10,000 potentially for Barb because uh, that project is closed out. And once she does all of the uh, requisitioning of grant funds, uh, she will no longer be working for the town. She's retired. We're not replacing that position. In addition, um, there's some um, eight to 10 weeks of overlapping time for me and whoever the new municipal manager is. Uh, this budget of 327 includes uh, uh, eight to 10 weeks of time when the new manager will be working with me. Uh, I plan to work through the end of uh, 2022, but uh, I've advised the select board that they should try to bring somebody on in November at the latest to uh, begin working with me. So there's, there's some money there that won't have to be in the budget necessarily next year. Um, Yes. There's a breaking point. Martha Staskis has a question. Um, going back to the $200,000 for the reservoir road work, as it serves four Waterbury parcels, is there a possibility that the state would contribute to that road improvement cost? Uh, likely not. Um, we can always ask, but it's a class three road. Um, we already received state funding for that road. Uh, the road existed before the state park uh, went there. So I, I don't think we should count on that. Um, I don't want to belabor things too much on the operating funds. Uh, there are some other line items in here, if I can remember what they are, that are one-time expenses that 
won't have to be in next year's budget. Um, but uh, I think for the sake of time and your interest level, I'll skip over some of that, um, unless you really want me to go line item by line item. In the highway fund, uh, which is also part of that 53 cent tax rate, it is a very standard uh, highway budget. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry, page 29 and 30. So go to page 30. Other reasons why uh, this fund, uh, this tax rate, I think is really as high as it needs to be for this year, and it doesn't put unnecessary pressure on next year, is we have <laughs> significantly increased the amount of money going into our capital improvement fund. So on page 30, <clears throat> excuse me, if you look at the very bottom in the highway fund, last year we sent $585,000 almost to the capital funds. In 2022, we're, we're sending um, about $200,000 more, $794,000 will go into the capital fund. And we have the ability to do that. And it's, it, it's, uh, an important thing to do because capital expenditures, as we uh, learned, you know, on the last article, oftentimes push two million dollars a year. So if we can put some of that money aside and and make it available for future years, um, that's a good thing. Uh, that same thing, uh, that same thing, it can be seen on page twenty-four, Karen. Mm -hmm. Not to the same degree. Not getting sick at home. Flash. All the way to All right. So again, you can see there where in the fire department um, we're adding significant money uh, to the um, that's being sent to the capital fund. We're really doing it. And you can see it best on page uh, 20. Twenty-seven, the top of page 27, which is in the recreation administration building expense. We've upped the uh, the appropriation to the capital fund from $10,000 to $100,000. So we're able to do all these things and still maintain a 53 cent tax rate. Um, in 2020, we had budgeted for a tax rate of 55 or 56 cents. The pandemic hit, uh, we immediately cut back spending uh, and the select board set the tax rate at 53 cents that year, I believe, uh, backing off our tax uh, burden for our residents and, and property owners. Uh, in 2021, we maintained that tax rate. In fact, we dropped it to 52 cents last year. So this will be um, three years in a row, the tax rate will be 52, 53 cents. And I think if we went back to 2019, it was in the 50, one fifty-two cent range. Then we had anticipated going up by four cents or so in 2020, but we didn't. So I think the board's uh, been very uh, fiscally responsible, trying to uh, respect the taxpayers' pocketbook through this whole pandemic and through this difficult time. So with that, unless you have other questions about the operating budget. I would recommend uh, voting yes on this. Uh, and I think that we'll get uh, reasonably good service for the, for the tax rate that we're asking for. Anyone have any questions on this portion? That's the old one, right? There's you are. 
Yeah. All right, moving on, we will move on the Q&A. No, I think that's the same. Thing. Yeah, if you hit answer live and then down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, any questions here or online? All right, we'll move on to the presentation of the special article surrounding the ICE Center. Okay, um, Article 7 of the morning asks the voters to appropriate $100,000 of the town's ARPA money uh, and uh, appropriating it for use by the ICE Center of Washington West. Um, as I indicated in my report, if you want a lot of information about this, you can look at my manager's report that starts on page nine of the annual report. We, we won't put it up because we don't have it. And I don't, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. But um, uh, I do talk about this uh, fairly significantly on pages 10 and 11 of my manager's report. So the ICE Center is a private not-for-profit organization. It's a community recreation facility that is here to serve the needs of, uh, the, of the town of Waterbury and the, and the greater uh, Harwood community. Uh, but the facility is located here on River Road down at the um, east end of, of the village. Uh, the facility opened in 2003 or four uh, and has uh, not had any uh, appropriation for its operation by the municipality throughout its entire um, existence. The town and village of, at the time did spend about $300,000 to uh, uh, provide access through the road, the paving of the road down there, and then the village brought water and sewer lines down. Uh, the, the village has more than um, recouped its investment through uh, the generation of water and sewer fees by the ice center over this uh, 15 or 18 year period. Um, but there's been no appropriation of municipal funds to the ice center for all of this time. Um, the center was hit pretty hard by the pandemic, uh, forced to close for over five months. And when they were closed, they had no revenue. Uh, they had to continue to pay uh, uh, overhead expenses, including debt service, their mortgage. They had to pay staff because they needed to be doing things at the center and, and didn't have any revenue. And during that time, they uh, had to dip into their uh, capital reserve funds to, uh, to pay their operating expenses. So this is an opportunity for the community to use aqua funds. This is money that has come from the federal government through the American Rescue Plan Act. And uh, it won't cost the local taxpayer anything. Uh, it does cost us as federal taxpayers uh, a little bit. We're all paying for that ARPA money that has been doled out by the federal government. Waterbury, as Mark said, uh, is going to be uh, have about $1.5 million. Uh, this budget, uh, including this line item and the, and the next uh, well, we won't talk about that. I'll, I'll go back to that in the operating funds in a second. But this budget potentially uses about $795,000 of, of the ARPA funds, which will leave about $775,000 left for the town to appropriate in a future year. And the town can have discussions about that. But uh, giving this money to the ICE Center now, uh, and the select board discussed this at several uh, meetings starting in December and then a couple of times during uh, January, had representatives of the ICE Center in to talk about how they might use this fund. 
And the goal of the select board is that by uh, appropriating this money to the ICE Center, it will be able to continue to operate as a private not-for-profit, uh, an organization not seeking funding from the town. Um, we have many uh, organizations in town from the Senior Center to the Children's School to uh, Center for Independent Living, uh, you name them, you can see them in the, in the budget. Uh, who ask for an appropriation every year from, from the town of Waterbury. Uh, and we have about $57,000 worth of those special articles uh, that are on the docket for you to act on next week as well. Since 2003, uh, the town has appropriated about, uh, I don't know, I think it was 1.6 or $1.2 million to those uh, organizations over that time. So hopefully, uh, if this money is appropriated to the ICE Center, they'll be able to replenish their capital fund. They have some capital expenses uh, on the horizon that they'll need to pay for. And uh, the, the goal is that this will allow that organization to continue to operate as a private not-for-profit uh, one that does not ask for um, an annual appropriation from the town. All right. Um, the Q and A. I can't see if there's a question at all. No. Anyone from the public wish to ask questions surrounding this special article? Again, if you're on Zoom, you can either click raise your hand or type it into the Q and A box. Um, Mark, I would like to go back a step and go yep. back to the operating budgets, if I may. So, sure. Karen, if you can go to page twenty-three. Sorry, I failed to mention this. Um, so the $100,000 of aqua appropriation that we just spoke about to the ICE Center, that's a special article. I would be remiss if I didn't let voters know that the select board have included in the budget a $600,000 appropriation of ARPA funds to EFA, the Edward Ferrari Utility District, which is the um, successor municipality to the village of Waterbury. Uh, the $600,000 that the select board have included in the budget for appropriation to EFA would pay for water improvements uh, to EFA customers that uh, lie outside the utility district's boundaries. In particular, there's a mobile home park on Newland Flats. Uh, the park's owner is already a um, customer of, of EFUD. There's 60 something mobile home units in that park. The owner of the park uh, has a water meter in their former well building. The water from EFUD comes into that uh, building goes through a meter, he pays uh, the, uh, the water bill to the utility district, and then the uh, water is distributed through private distribution system that the owner of the park owns. That distribution system is quite old. Um, it's it's uh, built of, I won't say not state-of-the-art um, not state-of-the-art materials. And there's likely uh, significant leaking in that system now. Uh, and that means the owner of that park is having to pay for water that nobody's using. Uh, EFUD has the legal responsibility to be um, responsible for the quality of water to the individual taps. So even though those mobile home units are not direct customers of EFUD. If anything should go wrong, uh, and it could be traced back to this poor distribution system, 
uh, EFLUD could be res held responsible for that. Um, that's a very unlikely scenario, but it is something that is in, in law that we have to pay attention to. More importantly, uh, the people in that park uh, should have good quality water and good quality water service. Uh, we can improve the fire protection in that whole area, that mobile home park in particular, and that area of town by getting some fire hydrants in there. So this money would allow EFUD to uh, make those improvements. There's also uh, on Route 100 from Howard Ave, stretching back uh, south uh, to the where the Sunflower Natural Food Store is, there's a small one inch service line there uh, that uh, provides service to a handful of customers on that line. There's no fire protection in that area. The area is really beginning to grow in terms of economic development. Um, the uh, Ivy Computers is planning a significant expansion in that area. So this $600,000, if there's any left over after the um, mobile home park gets uh, upgraded, can be used to upgrade that one inch line. And again, it would be best to put an eight inch line in there, uh, providing good service, uh, good pressures and good fire flows, uh, which would all be beneficial to the, to the town as a whole. Um, while it doesn't say so in the budget, this appropriation is actually conditioned. It's conditioned on EFUD taking some action at their meeting in May. And uh, EFUD, in consultation with the select board, thinks this is a good idea, would like to make these improvements, and having this money appropriated from the town of this EFUD, uh, of this ARPA money, uh, which is an eligible function of uh, eligible use of these funds to improve water systems. EFUD, uh, their share of this deal would be to turn over to the town a revolving loan fund that has assets of more than $1.8 million right now. Uh, about 1.2 of that is in loans, but uh, as of this morning, about 650,000 in cash and investments. So that will be coming to the town if the EFUD voters uh, so vote. If they if the budget here passes and EFUD does not take that action at the meeting in May, then the $600,000 doesn't get transferred. So uh, having the revolving loan fund will be, I think, a boom to the, to the town of Waterbury, uh, being able to use that revolving loan fund uh, to help with economic development or even housing in, in uh, any area in town, not just um, uh, restricted to the former village area where it is um, solely used now. So there's definitely something in the town for this. Uh, the water improvements alone, I think are worth doing, uh, but getting the revolving loan fund is uh, something that would be very beneficial in my estimation to the town. And I think that would be if, if these things both pass, that's the first step towards potentially merging the, the communities. And that's a discussion that the next select board will have with the next EFUD uh, commissioners uh, that get elected in, in May. And we can start talking about um, what, what the process of the merger might look like, you know, and ultimately that would have to be voted on by the the voters of, of both municipalities. It's not something that just can happen by waving a hand, but uh, it's it's something that the select board and the commissioners have indicated a, a willingness to at least explore. So anyway, that's that. You have a question. Okay. What type of oversight governance is established for how the 100,000 of our funds is used by the ICE Center? Sure. Does the town have to cover reporting on how the ICE Center expended those funds? You better ask. Yeah, they have to. Oh, yeah. right. have to identify themselves. Um, they can hear us. 
<laughs> okay, well, can you please identify yourself for the question? Yeah. If you go into participants, the last one was Mark Oh, right. Before, before yeah, that, that one. before that. They were just telling me that this is cool. Yeah. yeah. They don't have a question. We need to know who the person is asking the question. You want me to ask it? Sure. I mean, it's a reasonable question. I, so I think it's yeah. just in terms of knowing if it's a town resident asking the question verse. Well, I'm going to ask it and he's going to ask it. Sure. So the, the ICE Center is a not for profit community recreation facility. They're an eligible recipient of ARPA funds. The town can. Um, make this appropriation without being outside the, the law or the rules uh, that speak to the law. Um, the explanation is, I believe, right in the article that Article 7, to allow the I Center of Washington West to make necessary capital improvements to its facility at no cost to the taxpayer. So the money would be used to replenish their reserve funds that were, that were, um, had to be spent in order to meet their current expenses during a pandemic when they had no income. Uh, I know for a fact that they've got, uh, they've got to work on uh, a cooling tower uh, they have other expenses, other capital needs that they'll have down, down the road. And um, I think that the select board's uh, decision to ask the voters to do this simply puts the money into the ICE Center's pocket and allows their board of directors to use it um, for what they believe is uh, necessary expenditure for, for, the, for the facility. Um, I'm pretty certain they're not going to be using it for, you know, paying employees. Uh, but in the end, the, the appropriation allows the facility to continue operating um, into the future, which will include, you know, capital upgrades and improvements uh, without having to uh, come and ask for, for more money, or at least that's that's the hope of the community. Bill, it might be worth mentioning also there, the meeting we had in January that's reported where they came and presented to us. They did talk a lot about what they needed the funds for, yeah. how it would be used. They presented a really um, thorough budget. So if it's of more interest, um, you can find that in the meeting minutes and a recorded meeting from January. Right. I don't know if there's anybody from the ICE Center that's out there that might want to I don't put think, in two cents, but I don't think they can talk though, right? She can lock in my hand. Uh, oh, okay. I'm going to somebody raise their hand. Yeah, but now it's down. Okay. I can raise a hand and she can allow me to speak. Okay. Uh, if anyone on the Zoom is uh, referencing to speak to any of the events, go ahead and click. Oh, Jonathan, I'm sorry, we'll come right back to you. Can you hear me? All right. Hey, Bob. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. This is Bob Perrette. Yeah. Uh, can, you, can you state your name so everyone knows who you are? Sure. It's Bob Perret. I'm a Waterbury resident. I'm a board member on the, at the ice rink for the last 20 plus years. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we certainly could use the uh, replenishment of our capital reserves as, as be, has been talked about here. I mean, we've got a lot of capital projects. We've we spent some money. That is one of the reasons that uh, the capital reserve fund is down. 
uh, part of the cooling tower, uh, compressors. Um, there's a there's a list of items that we went through, um, and there's there's ongoing maintenance. I mean, the reserve fund is there for stuff that it's going to break in the future, um, and we've always had we've we've built that up over time, and we like to have have that reserve fund there for emergencies and for ongoing maintenance of of the facility. So the facility is 20 years old. Uh, you know, we've we've been able to pay down debt over the last 20 years significantly. But as the as we pay down debt and the facility ages, you know, we're sort of replacing our our debt savings with, you know, higher repairs and maintenance in the facility. Um, we had some issues with the uh, uh, dehumidification system over the summer um, that we had to fix as well. So, um, I mean, the money goes into our capital reserves and and, um, you know, we're very diligent uh, about and practical about what we spend it on. I think uh, when the select board met with with folks from the ICE Center, and one of the reasons why I recommended this to the select board was that, you know, here's a, a private not-for-profit organization providing recreation facilities to the community at no cost to the to the taxpayers, and over their uh, 18 years of operation, they were able to pay all of their bills. Uh, significantly pay down their debt. I think they started off at about $1.6 million and, and they're down to in the $800,000 range now. So they've paid off about half of their debt. And they were also able to put money into a capital reserve fund. I think they told us uh, the year before the pandemic, if my, my memory is correct, Mark and Danny in particular, uh, that they had about... Uh, Three hundred thousand dollars or so in reserves that, unfortunately, they had to burn through once the pandemic hit. So uh, the organization appears, from the outside looking in, to be well run, and uh, the town is looking to just give them a, a leg up uh, to to kind of uh, replenish their reserve funds so that they're able to move into the future. Uh, continuing to operate as well as they have in the past without being a burden to the community. Any additional questions on either the ICE Center discussion or the discussion on the EFUD? $600,000. Any questions here? We're on Zoom. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Um, we're going to move on to number seven presentation of the proposed expenditure of up to $50,000 to engage a consultant to develop a master plan for the recreation facilities at Hope Davy Park and on land used for recreation activities on 40 acres of land owned by the Edward Far Utility District on River Road near the ice center of Washington West. And that is article eight. Mark, yeah. before we do that, Jonathan. He lowered his hand. Okay, yeah. I think he's all set. All right. He didn't know Bob was going to answer. No, yeah, I never said Okay, article seven, uh, the $50,000. So Hope Davy Park in Waterbury Center is a, a mixed use recreation facility uh, uh, on, the, on the Maple Street frontage. There's a picnic pavilion, and then there's uh, a couple of playing fields, uh, little league fields, softball fields uh, in the springtime that get transformed into soccer fields in the fall. Um, and then in the back uh, portion of the facility, uh, there's a bridge that Ben and Jerry's uh, volunteered to build for the community that takes, um, that allows people to cross over. Um, uh, it's not really a brook, it's a, it's a brookish kind of uh, wetland uh, trench that uh, water moves through the 
through very slowly through the through the park, uh, and and when you cross that uh, cross that bridge, you come to a, a much more undeveloped uh, area of the park. Uh, that area historically was used for people to hike, to walk, to you know observe uh, nature, animals. Um, uh, horseback ride. And um, a number of years ago, probably 20 years or so ago, maybe even a little bit more, um, a group of people came to the town select board and asked if they could develop a um, uh, this golf course on, on that undeveloped portion of the property. The select board gave permission to do it. Uh, and at the same time told the, the small group of people, um, you know, we're not going to spend any money on a disc golf course, whatever you do out there, you do on your own. And uh, for good or bad, that has morphed over time into a disc golf course that uh, gets a lot of use. Uh, and there's a lot of pressure put on the property by the disc golfers. And uh, conflicts have arisen both in terms of conflicts with the, with the natural environment. Uh, there are uh, wetlands, map wetlands that are out in that area that have likely not been uh, uh, avoided as probably they should have been. And <clears throat> there's conflicts between people who are interested in using the, that part of the facility for quiet, more passive um, recreation, the, the walking, the hiking, the nature observing, as opposed to the disc golf. Uh, this has become an issue, um, especially over the last couple of years. It's been brought to the attention of the select board a couple of times over the, over the past decade or so, but uh, really kind of started to take on a life of its own in the past, uh, Oh, I would say 24 months. The Recreation Committee has been uh, trying to address these concerns that have been brought to it by members of the public and trying to uh, work with the people that play disc golf, looking to try to establish a memorandum of operations or a memorandum of understanding about how the course will be used, maintained, and further developed. Um, some of the issues that have been raised is that uh, there's been a lot of um, managing of that land, if you will, that has not been done by the municipality. And that's uh, regrettable from my perspective and I'm, I'm responsible, I guess, as much as anyone for that situation, but we're trying to address it now. Um, the course has been built. Uh, some question whether the course has been developed in places where it's appropriate for this use. Uh, and as I said, the rec committee has been trying to uh, come up with a plan to address these concerns. Um, recently, the, uh, there's been a draft MOU presented to the select board. Uh, currently, there is really no group uh, to sign that MOU with the select board, and the select board has, has pushed the group of users there to say, you know, it might be in your best interest to um, form a, a, a more formal group so that we can enter into this MOU so that you can continue to uh, use the facility in a manner that uh, the town is... Um, uh, in alignment. <clears throat> At the same time, uh, some push has been made by members of the public to the rec committee about, uh, well, this is a facility that really should be available, fully available to the public. Uh, we've got uh, American with Disabilities Act issues, uh, facilities that are on town land that are owned by the town, uh, even though we didn't build the disc golf course, it's on our property. Um, a case can be made that, that, that the course should be accessible to those with disabilities. 
certainly the, the playgrounds and the playing fields need to be fully accessible and even, even walking facilities need to be accessible. So with that, the Red Committee has worked hard. <clears throat> they have come up with a, a draft uh, scope to have a consultant hired to come in and do an assessment of what's on the ground at these facilities and to help kind of design a plan forward where the, where the facility can be uh, improved and upgraded to uh, meet the needs of the needs and the desires of all the people that want to use that uh, that park. <coughs> the rec committee estimated that uh, that work that I just described might cost about thirty five thousand dollars. At the same time, a different group of individuals have been talking with both the select board and the EFUD commissioners about developing a, um, a significant major skate park uh, at the site of uh, where the ice center is, down on that 40 acres of land that is currently owned by the utility district. Um, that facility, if it's going to be there, is going to have to be fit in amongst other recreation uses that have been permitted by EFUD over time. There's, a, uh, as most of you know, there's a, a Waterbury Area Trails Association trailhead there that uh, allows access up into Perry Hill mountain biking trails. There's a pump park uh, for bicycling along the road in the vicinity of the trailhead. Uh, there's a soccer field that's operated by Capital Soccer, and there's a dog park on the site that's operated by uh, another uh, group of users that were interested in developing that uh, uh, back right after the flood. And then, of course, there's the ice center. Uh, the, the soccer folks at Capital Soccer have been asking the EFUD commissioners for about four or five years now to try to develop an additional soccer field down there. And uh, now we have the group that wants to do skateboarding to have a, a, a fully designed concrete permanent skateboard park there. Uh, they would like uh, some room at that area to, um, to undertake that. Um, the, the property is owned by the Edward Ferrari Utility District right now. There are conversations ongoing between the commissioners and the select board about transferring that property to town ownership. EFUN is a utility district now, the former village, which was a general purpose, uh, all uh, purpose government uh, no longer exists. Uh, they operate a water and sewer system. They don't have any authority to, uh, to operate recreation facilities. There's nothing illegal about them leasing out uh, land for recreation purposes, but uh, we think that the town, given the fact that the town has a recreation department and the recreation committee would be the better, um, the better uh, municipality to move forward and to get that site fully developed. Uh, it would require um, an upgrade to its master plan. Uh, the 40 acre site is under an Act 250 permit and all of the facilities that I just mentioned that uh, and uses that are ongoing there are part of that uh, master plan and part of that Act 250 permit. The ice, uh, the skateboarding park, if it were to be located there uh, would need to be uh, would need to upgrade and, and amend the Act 250 permit in order to allow that. So um, the hope was that we might be able to hire one consultant to do the work at both of these facilities and to get some economies of scale, uh, one consultant, one report that has to be written, uh, field work that can happen all at the same time, as opposed to you know two different consultants coming uh, to two different locations <laughs> and having to do similar work. So 
The $50,000 is a, is a best guess, educated guess based on the $35,000 um, budget that was suggested for Hope Davy Park. Uh, we believe that we can get the work that I just described done at both facilities for this money. And um, if this article is approved at town meeting day, then um, the appropriation will have been made and the select board will work at that time uh, more with the rec committee and with the group that is uh, interested in the skateboard park to uh, refine a scope of services that would be able to be put out to bid for a consultant that uh, much better defines the uh, deliverables that we would expect. So that's uh, a broad overview of those two projects that are included under one umbrella of a $50,000 appropriation. Thank you, Bill. Um, any questions? from folks in the room or online. Again, if you're joining us, just joined us online, you can either hit raise your hand or type into the Q&A box. One last thing, uh, Mark Fryer suggested when we talked about putting this in the budget that, you know, maybe we would, could be more hopeful that $50,000 would be actually more than we needed for this and there might be some money left over to begin some of the implementation of, of the, the project specifically at, at the uh, Hope Davy site. Uh, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, there's a long way to go, but if, if we get a good deal from a consultant, we might have a little bit of a leg up on making some of the actual improvements necessary. So I do want to make a correction uh, on the last, I don't know if it was the last meeting, the meeting before when I think you were here, Tom, we talked about possible avenues of, you know, this approach. Um, I had suggested that uh, wetlands biologists from the state agency and natural resources would come and delineate for free after researching that and talking to a few other people about it. Um, I understand that, uh, the process is um, that you have to hire a private wetland biologist to come delineate first, and then the state comes in and, and checks what they've done and, and make sure what they've done is correct. Seems a little redundant, uh, a little excessively costly for no reason, but um, that apparently is the process now. Uh, I've had people from agency and after resources Come to properties of mine and projects of mine that uh, they have talked to me about the wetlands issues that were there. But uh, as the state uh, per permit process evolves, uh, you know, more people get involved, and so that's how that right. occurs. Well, now. I think part of, and I'm not defending the, the state's um, decision if that's what they told you, but. From our perspective, the process is not only to delineate where the wetlands are, we have a reasonably good mapping of that now, but we'll be asking the consultant not only where the wetlands are, but then how can the wetland areas be protected and then still use the property for some recreation purposes. And of course, you know, uh, part of the wild card of that is, is that, you know, it could be that that uh, you can't use the property the way it's currently being used. And, and I think the board is going into this with the eyes open about that fact, uh, but this is something that uh, we need to address. And, uh, you know, there's, as I said, in addition to the whole issue of wetlands and uh, conflicting or competing or complementary uses, however you want to talk about that, we also have the uh, issues with making it accessible as well for, for all people, uh, including the disabled. So it's, you know, we don't know where this is gonna end up. And uh, unfortunately that's a, 
that's a reality of the situation, but I think we owe it to ourselves as a community to do that. All right, any other questions on this item of the presentation, either from in the room or online? Seeing anything online. So we have a little, we're good, right? Uh, we have a little surprise presentation and I'm sure this would be more impactful uh, during a normal town meeting. But, uh, me, yeah, go ahead. I seem to recall, this is, I think this is Bill Victor. Yeah, Ooh, Bill Victor yeah. seems to recall a similar issue evolving at the waterworks. Is that um, the creation of bike trails? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, there, there, Billy, there are some uh, concerns with the use of the um, 400 acres that EFUD owns up in mostly in Stowe, uh, where the water, um, the source of water is for the Edward Fry Utility District. Uh, those issues are currently under discussion by EFUD. They had a, a meeting a week or so ago, and some people who wanted to um, do uh, uh, an event, uh, an orienteering event, I guess it was up there. Uh, they came in and talked to the commissioners uh, a week or so ago, and the commissioners have been working with uh, its. Uh, forestry consultants and its um, consultants that deal with the source protection plan for the water uh, system to try to address those needs. And it's a challenge because uh, people feel emboldened. They feel that, well, it's public property, so I can use it any way that I want. And uh, they they go out and they've, they've cut uh, They've cut trees in the watershed. They've built uh, built trails through there, and it's very difficult to regulate. But having said that, that's a different municipality right now, anyway. <laughs> and um, we, the select board, doesn't have any authority to to make any uh, any make any statements about that use at this time. Hopefully, that answered your question. Um, yeah. Meg, would monies needed for restoration of the wetlands in the Hope Davy Natural Area be included in this 50000 That is up for vote. Well, we don't know. Uh, I said a minute ago that if, if the planning work doesn't cost $50,000, there may be some money left over that some implementation can happen. Uh, we don't know yet whether any restoration of wetlands needs to be done. So we'll answer that question when we get the answers. Any other question? <laughs> Um, so we have a little surprise um, presentation for some folks um, to receive some outstanding community service work, but I'm going to hand it over to, to Chris. Okay, well, if you don't mind, I'm going to peel this thing off. And, uh, uh, you know, it's obvious tonight what the pandemic has done uh, in our community. It's uh, derailed a lot of our normalcy. It has uh, allowed things to slip through the cracks and uh, some cases made parts of our normal life completely disappear. Um, I wasn't sure how I was gonna bring this conversation forward. Uh, today, when I came down to the sign orders, um, as I was leaving the building, it hit me right in the face. Um, I looked on the side of the wall across from Karen's uh, seat, and there was a couple of displays showing some people that were 
very devoted in their lifetime to this community. Um, and it was kind of a display of history of people in the past that have been very instrumental in, in the evolution of this town. Uh, I'm just going to touch base on a couple of things that, uh, you know, that I felt were important to me in my lifetime here. And I'm sure that there's other people that have been here for long periods of time that um, also, you know, anybody that's been here for any length of time has, has a history here. And we all have different stories, uh, but they all intertwine. And, you know, I remember as a kid fishing the Shaw Mansion Brook, you could walk down through that brook during the day and from pool to pool, see any number of trout, brook trout, uh, native brook trout swimming in the holes. <clears throat> uh, up there in the old Jaime Myers farm up on Loomis Hill, there was a swimming hole with a big old willow tree that hung out over that swimming hole. And it had a rope off from it. And you used to be able to swing off that rope and go out over the hole and drop off down into the hole. And the hole was so deep, you couldn't see it, bottom of it. Today, you can walk across that same spot and the water probably comes up the middle of your shins. The old Shaw Mansion dip used to be a great sliding place for people, you know, for kids. I remember many a night sliding down that steep hill halfway up the other side before it was a town maintained, fully maintained road through the winter. So part of those things, other things in my life that drove me to stay here uh, and the history that came with that is important when it comes to communities. And like I said, there's so many people that have histories in this community from being here a long time. And then when I got involved in the town part of the municipality, the politics of it, I really came to learn something else. Uh, the really important parts of the community, the history of that, the history of the fact that there are certain people that get involved in their communities, put their lifelong effort into it, their love into it, um, and a lot of devoted time into it. Communities such as Waterberries don't just run on autopilot, you know, they don't just happen. When people come here to live, uh, they come here to start a history of their own. But sometimes it's difficult to see the history that came before them. And as towns evolve, they leave in their wake this history that's so important to the community because uh, it helps new members build on the history that's been made by the sacrifices and the time and dedication of people that step forward to serve their community. And I think we would be remiss if we didn't continue to recognize those people. Uh, and I was thinking about it and, you know, there's two people that I can think of off the top of my head that um, to me are, would be the George Bailey's of this community. And if it wasn't for those George Bailey's, we'd be living in Pottersville. And if nobody has ever seen that movie, It's a Wonderful Life, <laughs> you would do yourself a service to watch it. So tonight, I would like to uh, take the baton from Skip Flanders, at least for this particular night, we'll see where it goes from here, and present uh, the Keith Wallace Award to probably two of the most important people that are the true definition of what that award was created for. And being the redneck that I am, I had to sneak the awards in <laughs> to bring them in. And uh, Bill Shepluck, you are uh, with all of my heart and all of the select board's heart and the past select board's heart, uh, with all of our love and respect, 
we appreciate your years of dedication to this town. And uh, with the changing of the guard, per se, um, it's a little bit uh, frightening to move forward with uh, with somebody you know new after all the years that you've been here. Um, and you know it's it's going to be difficult. Um, but there's no way I was going to allow this town meeting uh, to pass in in you leaving our community without this award. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Skip Landis is not here to receive his tonight, but um, <laughs> well, mine. No, thanks. Speak. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. Okay. You won't be forgotten. Uh, sure. Just to, I mean, to be um, to be mentioned in the same breath of George Bailey, <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite. I'm a sucker for sappy movies. <laughs> well, that's one of my favorites. So. We watch that uh, anyway. Every, every Christmas. Yeah, me it's too. And uh, I very much appreciate this. I'm not going to give a speech. I'm hoping I'll be around next year at town meeting. Uh, I won't be in my position. You don't have to give this to me again, but I'm <laughs> hopeful that. I'll be here a year from now too. So thank you all very much. It's a great one. You have the number sure. of Christmas Christmas. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dr. Uh, thank, <laughs> thank, thank you all. Thank yes. You. <laughs> thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way to get the chat done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one was for Skip, you said? It yeah. was, yeah. Yeah. How can we express our support for this wonderful recognition? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, I got to tell you one more thing. Uh, to sit here and watch you go through everything like you do uh, and have it be such second nature. Like I said, it's it's frightening to think that we're going to find somebody as fluent with their with their job as you are. Well, fortunately, nobody's irreplaceable, and I'm yeah. I'm confident that you'll find somebody. <laughs> some and some Lisa. Uh, Lisa has a question for you. <laughs> I'll tell you, I tried to get my wife to come in and sit with uh, just a bag here beside us, but in, in the chair there. And you know what? She's not <laughs> one to be in the public eye. So <laughs> my coat's got a little self and chain uh, back in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, Moving on to number eight, presentation of information or questions concerning articles nine to 34, which are the special articles. Um, for those that do have the town report, um, you can find um, a, each group that has a um, special article request tends to have a, I think it's a requirement, correct? Could they put some kind of report in the town report? May yep. I ask, isn't the town report also on our website now? The town report is on our website. There is a digital copy of the town report on, on the website page as well. and on another buried section. Um, but happy to answer, try to answer any questions that we can on any of those special articles. I don't know if we need to go down um, you know, each group. I think there's only one additional new group this year, which is the Friends of the Waterbury Reservoir. Right. Are they the only new one? Yes. Um, which and the and the fifty thousand for the fire center. Yeah, we already talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. This is just nine to thirty. Oh right, right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any <laughs> questions? Um, any questions on the special articles from anyone in the room or online? 
All right. Um, presentations of instructions for Australian ballot voting. So the early and absentee voting started on February 9th. Unlike last year, we are allowing people to vote during normal business hours. So that's been steady. Um, I'm mailing ballots to those that request them. Uh, that time window is shortening towards the end of the week. And then we will be voting in person at Brookside Primary School on March 1st from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Any questions on the procedures for Australian ballot voting? Seeing none, um, we're going to move, I guess, your addition to the meeting kind of starts partially encompassed by number 10, which is discussed next meeting date. Yeah. So um, the Planning Commission has interviewed candidates for zoning administrator. Um, as you know, we've, we've offered the job three times in the last four months or so, five months. And um, for a variety of reasons, uh, the people that we've offered the job to haven't taken it or took it and then left within a week. Um, so, the Planning Commission interviewed three candidates at their last meeting, and they have recommended a, an individual. Uh, I don't have his name with me, unfortunately. I, don't, I think I know it, but I don't want to say it at this point. Um, but as I've mentioned in the past, the process for hiring a zoning administrator requires, a, it's a two-step nomination by the Planning Commission and then appointment by the select board as opposed to, um, you know, hiring by the municipal manager. So on Thursday this week, I'm going to meet with the individual that the Planning Commission has nominated to talk about pay and benefits and the like. He's a very good candidate. Um, is a is a director of planning and zoning in another community so i think maybe somebody that could step up uh, to the planner position when steve retires uh, if if the person is appointed by the select board and, and then uh, takes the job and stays here longer um, the select board does not meet now until um, March 7th, if you stick to your regular schedule. Um, there's also a grant application for this downtown transportation fund that we've included in our budget. We talked about tonight the $240,000 expenditure with $200,000 potential grant. Um, that process requires uh, a resolution by the Planning Commission and then uh, approval by the Select Board as well. This is a state rule. And um, unfortunately, I was not aware of that when we talked about putting that money in the budget. Uh, we put it in at the last meeting in January and said, you know, if we get the grant, we'll spend this money. If we don't get the grant, we won't. We can't get the grant unless we go through this process. So I was wondering if the select board might be willing to meet at 6.30 on February 28th. That's Monday night next week. You can interview the candidate for zoning administrator, and then you can take action on this. The, the planning commission is meeting at 7 o'clock on Monday next week, so they can review the grant thing and make a recommendation and then you'll be finished with the interview by seven or so. And then if they recommend it, you can approve the grant application. Um, if we don't meet on the, on the uh, 28th, the, the deadline for the grant application is March 7th. Uh, you don't, the board doesn't meet until the evening of March 7th, so you've missed that. So I would recommend, if you can do it, to meet on the 28th at 6.30 to interview the candidate, potentially appoint him and take action on this grant. 
I might have a play acting. Um, I'm not sure what the schedule is yet, but I, I would be able to come afterwards if that's not away. What time is the day? As to be determined. Yeah. yeah. It's usually they're at five. So. Yeah. So even if you were home, though, it might be I'd six be here by six, like by six thirty, six forty. Can a quorum of you make it? Yeah, yeah I'm not a problem for me. All right, great. So if you can warn a meeting, Carla, for 6 30 on the 28th of yeah, February. This week. Yep. And I'm assuming that means that the 3 7 meeting is probably not necessary. Yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be out of town on the 7th anyway. Um, You've met a lot. It will be a new board. The board can certainly meet without me. I guess my recommendation would be to wait to have the first meeting in March on the third Monday of March. Wait until uh, March 21st as opposed to doing it on the 7th. There's nothing wrong with that. Whomever wins election will come in and uh, Take their oaths. They don't have to wait until the twenty-first. They'll become select board members immediately. But I think scheduling the meeting on the twenty-first would be better. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Is that everything? Anyone online? No questions, no hands raised. Looks like we can take a motion to. Can I, can I recognize the work that you and Katie have done mm -hmm. over the past several years or a couple of years? Yes. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Thank you both. For... Meeting, it sounds like. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Thanks everyone for coming. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for those who attended tonight. Thanks for the tech support. What a team you two. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jan. Uh, Wait, I guess I'm going to. Well, how's the new job going? Have you started? It is great. Yeah.